I had asked you just before the end of the class were not answered. So I will probably ask you the same questions again. And let's see here how I can do that. Okay, whiteboard, share. Okay. Yesterday, I remember that I asked you, what would you buy if you had a lot of money? I also ask it you, where would you go if you were not under a quarantine? Or I can ask you like, uh, where would you have gone yesterday if you could have gone out what will you do this weekend if you can go out some of these questions were asked to you yesterday at the end of the class, but I never got any answer. Is there anyone there who is capable of answering one or all of them to me, please? I want to see. Come on, guys. Can you answer the questions for me? Come on, don't be shy. Can anyone answer the questions that I asked you just before the internet was down yesterday? Okay, I got an answer here. Okay, somebody says travel a lot, good. Okay, somebody wants to buy a car. Okay, what else? Wow. Somebody here is a little more ambitious. He wants to buy a beach house. Okay, uh, observe the construction of here. Okay, I would buy, buy is B-U-Y, a beach house if I have. No, I have to say if I had a lot of money because it's a hypothetical situation. Uh, another person said he or she would buy an island is not a island, a island. Listen to the sound, a island. Does, is it good? So it's an island. Another person here says he would travel the world with his daughter. That's nice. Uh, wow, there is somebody else that also wants to buy a beach house. Okay, another person. Uh, Okay, the Dubai person, observe your construction. If I had money, it's perfect. I will visit. No, if you say if I had, I have to say I would visit, not I will. I will is only possible if you say if I have money, I will visit Dubai, okay? I would visit, very good, glad you understood. So. This was about yesterday's class, and I gave you a lot of exercises. Oh, okay, I have, we have somebody here who would love to share the money with everyone that needs it, that needs it, okay? Yeah, you can send some money over, okay? I would buy a big boat to travel around the world. If I could, I would ride a bike. Yes, unfortunately, not even a bike. We can go out, I think. I'm not sure. Okay, very good. I guess that most of you got the idea. If I were not under, I would go to Canada. <laughs> yes. 
uh, probably I would also go to Canada, okay? I think it's better. No, no. Well, anyway, this is what we were talking about yesterday. I gave you some exercises and I hope you tried to do that, okay? Because today we are going to change topics. We'll talk about something a little more interesting and maybe a little more complicated. So can I just go to today's topic? Everyone is here, okay. So let me share a different screen with you and we'll start today's topic. Is there any question? Is there anything that you would like to ask me about yesterday's class? Or no? No class, no questions? No questions about yesterday's class? Okay, so what are we going to talk about today? Today we'll go into something which I consider extremely important and not very common for Brazilians. Brazilians don't like this. And they don't like it because of something interesting. It's probably because they think in Portuguese all the time. And when you think in Portuguese all the time, you never use this, okay? So, let's do it. Let's share the screen and see what we have for today's class. Here. Okay. Today we are going to talk about passive voice. I'm sure that many of you have heard this name, but I'm sure that many of you don't know how to use this properly or don't know how or why you should use this much more often than in Portuguese. So this is what we will be discussing today, okay? So stay with me. Let me put the chat here. If you have any questions, just don't hesitate to ask me. Pay attention here. In every language, Portuguese, Spanish, French, English, you always have two kinds of voice, passive voice and active voice. Active voice is when the subject is responsible for doing the action. And passive voice, the subject is not responsible. The subject suffers the action, okay? Now, I would like, to start asking you to analyze these three questions that I have here, these three sentences, in fact. Here, please. People speak Portuguese in Brazil, okay? They built that house in 1932, and the company fired John, due to the coronavirus crisis last week. What I want to know, that's the first question of the day. Are these sentences right or wrong in your opinion? Please let me know what you think about them. Are they right or wrong in your opinion? I have no idea, I don't know. Come on guys, please don't be shy. Tell me, I want to continue. Are they right or wrong? Bruno, are you listening to me? Bruno, are you there? I can't get an answer. Are they right or wrong? Hello, are you guys listening to me? 
I'm not listening to anyone. <laughs> Hello. Yes. Everyone is able to hear you. Yes. Yes. They, they're typing on the chat box. Everyone I can't. I can't see the chat box. Can you help me? I can't see any answers. That's why I'm stuck here. I can't see the chat box anywhere. Okay, as I haven't got any reply and I really don't know what's going on. Okay, I got the chat, very good. I'm listening, we put on the box right, okay. Wrong, not, okay, I got here. All right, now I can see. Is it bad English? Yes, all of them are bad English. Somebody said they are right, yes. Grammatically speaking, all of them are right, but they are considered bad English. Let's understand why they are bad English, okay? Please stay with me and let's talk about each one of them. In the first sentence right here, I have people speak Portuguese in Brazil. You can say, yes, we speak Portuguese in Brazil. All right, but think about it. Do you have a dog in your house? Do you have a cat or any kind of pet in your house? Do you ever talk to your dog? Do you ever talk to your pet or your birds? Call them, play with them? I think you do. But the thing is, do they ever talk back to you? I don't think so. Why not? Because speaking, is an ability that only people have. So this is considered kind of bad English because people speak. Yeah, of course. Only people have the ability of speaking in our planet. So far, no other animal has got the ability to speak. Some animals like a parrot can imitate sounds, but not speaking, okay? So this is considered bad English. Of course, people understand. But Brazilians, when you meet a person, let's say from Thailand, you're going to ask them, oh, you're from Thailand. What language do people speak there? This is bad English, okay? I will explain later why. In the second case, they built that house in 1932. You can say this is a perfect construction in the simple past. I have the subject, the verb, the complement, and I have a date in 1932. But who the hell is they? Do you know anybody that worked in the construction of the house? If you say my father built that house in 1932, that's very good English. My grandfather father built that house in 1932. That's very good English, but they, they doesn't mean anybody, okay? So it's not important. And if the subject of the active voice is not important, you should not use it. The last example is the company fired John due to coronavirus crisis last week. Is it important that the company fired? Of course, if he was fired, it was by the company. So this is kind of obvious. So that's why they are all considered bad English, not grammatically wrong, but not good English. The three of them are in the active voice and the subject, they, people, the company are not really important. What is important here is the action of speaking Portuguese in Brazil, the house that was built in 1932, and the fact that John was fired. This is the important thing, okay? So all these explanation is right here, okay? I don't want to read everything for you because we have a lot of things to study in this class, okay? 
Any specific question about this? I can see the chat box now, so you can ask me and, and I will reply immediately. Any question or can I go on? And I also found another way to help you. So yeah. we good. I can read as well. Okay. Guys, yes. any doubts at all? Is it bad English? Yes, it's bad English. Not good English. Grammatically, okay, but not good construction. Bad English, yes. Any other question or no? So let's move on and let's see. Okay. Let's see what happens. Good. You see, uh, in order to change a sentence, any sentence practically, from the active voice to the passive voice, it's quite simple. The object of the active voice is going to be the subject of the passive voice. And you always need to introduce, to insert the verb to be in the passive sentence, plus the verb of the sentence goes to the past participle, okay? You can say, but I already have a verb to be in the active voice. Excellent. Use it again. We are going to see how. So observe how simple it is. Oh, first case here. Oh, I'm right here. Please follow with me. They speak Portuguese in Brazil. Separate the sentence into parts. They is the subject. It's Pick is the verb. After the verb, or right at the verb, you ask the question, they speak what? Or if it's another verb, you can say who or whom. The answer to the question what or who is going to be the object. For example, they speak what in Brazil? Portuguese. So Portuguese is the answer. Okay, if Portuguese is the answer, Portuguese is the object of the active voice. And then this is going to be the subject of the passive voice, Portuguese. Now, the verb speak, it's in the present. When the verb of the sentence that you want to change is in the present, you introduce the verb to be in the present. Portuguese is right here and then you need the past participle of the verb to speak past participle of the verb to speak is spoken so the correct answer is portuguese is spoken in brazil this is a very good construction this would be very good english so once again imagine you want to let's say you need somebody from Thailand and you want to discover what language they speak there. The best possible question would be, what language is spoken in Thailand? Or what language or languages are spoken in Malta? Okay? They speak two languages there. What languages are spoken in Malta? All right? Concerning the second case, they built that house. Again, yeah, no. they built. Built what? That house. Not in 1932. That's the time expression. It will stay there. They built what? That house. So that house is going to be the subject. That house. Built is a verb in the past. So that means I have to use the verb to be in the past. That house was. What is the past part of built? It's build, built, built. It's the same. Lucky me. So the house was built in 1932. The next time you take a tour in one of those sightseeing buses, a double-decker, try to listen to the guide. The guide is going to use passive constructions all the time. She's never going to say, if you look on your right, you can see the famous White House. They built the White House before the Civil War. 
Never, never. Because it's not important who built. If you pay attention, passive voice will be heard all the time. If you look right, you can see the famous White House. The White House was built before the Civil War by President Abraham Lincoln or something like that, okay? And the last example was the company fired John due to coronavirus last week. So the company fired, fired who or fired whom? John. John is the answer. So John is the object. Then I start the new sentence with John was fired due to coronavirus last week. One minute break. Questions, please write your questions here. I'm just looking at the chat box to see if you have any question. So I can move on if you have no question. One minute, come on. No, no questions for now. You think we could, good. Good. Awesome, Roberto, carry on. Guys, if you have any doubts in between, feel free to type in and I will read it as soon as Roberto give us a chance. I will give, uh, I will read it to him, your question, okay? Thank you, carry on, Roberto. Thank you, let's go then. So, as I said, the passive voice can be used in all the tenses. So here, you will have the explanation for all the uses and tenses. Again, repeating again, emphasizing again. We use the passive voice because we don't know who did the action. For example, the documents were stolen. It's not good to say somebody stole the documents. Of course, they understand. But you don't know who stole, so it's better to say the documents were stolen. We don't know who stole them. Or the pyramids were built nearly 5,000 years ago by the ancient Egyptians. What we want to emphasize is not that the Egyptians built, because we don't really know if they were Egyptians. What we want to emphasize is that the pyramids were built. Okay, so the receiver of the action is more important than the person responsible for it. So, as I said, we can change all the forms. And again, if you observe, there are several examples here. People drink champagne on New Year's Eve. Champagne is drunk. Chefs use these machines to mix the ingredients. These machines, plural, are used. They renovated the restaurant in 2004. The restaurant was renovated. So, as I promised, we have examples for all the verb tenses that exist in English. In the present, in the present, the passive voice used the verb is or are plus the past participle. For example, first the apples are picked then they are cleaned, and finally they are packed and shipped to the market, okay? All of them are in the passive voice, are picked, are cleaned, and are packed and shipped. It is believed that the plane crashed in the Pacific Ocean. You see, it's already, so the passive voice is better than active voice. Yes. In many situations, when the subject is not important, it's recommended to use the passive voice, not active voice. A Brazilian would probably say, uh, people say New York is the most diverse city in the US. Well, people, that's not important. So why don't you say New York is considered New York was considered New York is supposed to be passive voice is better. Okay, so you have many examples here in the present. In the past, okay, if you have no further question about the present, in the past, I'm going to use the verb to be in the past. Okay, let me go back down here. Okay. 
Okay, present, past. You see, uh, we're going to use was and the word plus the past participle. George Washington was elected president again. Okay. George Washington was elected president in 1788. You see, if you are a Brazilian, you would probably say they elected George Washington president in 1788. Why? Because you think in Portuguese. But they is not important. Okay? So it's better to say that he was elected president in 1788. I'll give you a real example. One day, a friend of mine was going to visit New York. And I told him there was a very nice restaurant, a very nice restaurant near the Guggenheim Museum in New York. So he was walking near the Guggenheim Museum, but he couldn't find the restaurant. And then he stopped a person on the street and said, excuse me, sir, my teacher told me, the guy didn't even stop to talk to him. The guy simply walked away like, what? Who cares about what your teacher told you? You see? So this, my teacher told me, it's a very stupid way of asking a question. It would be much better to use a construction that doesn't exist in Portuguese, but it's perfect in English. It's, I was told. Instead of saying, my teacher told me, I was told. Like, excuse me, sir, I was told there is a very good Italian restaurant near here. At the same time, you can be sure they will show you the restaurant okay so in the past events george washington crimes two people were killed 10 children were injured when part of the school roof collapsed if you read the newspaper you will see that every day they use passive voice and not active voice you can say but why because they never mentioned the name of the person that told the journalist what happened. So it's better to omit that. They never reviewed the source of information. So they only use passive voices in the news. If we have uh, constructions in the present continuous or past continuous, observe how interesting. Oh, they are building a new pool at the club. Again, I don't know who is building the pool. But they are building, building what? A new pool. So I simply say, a new pool, are building, is in the present continuous. So I say, a new pool is, now I need to preserve the sentence, not to change the meaning of it in the present continuous. So a new pool is being, and then I need the past parts of the main verb, built at the club. This is not only very good English, but it's also perfect Portuguese. So here, if you even think in Portuguese, you might come up with something like this. A new pool is being built at the club. If it's in the past continuous, they were building, you simply say a new pool was being built at the club. I can also use a passive voice with the present perfect and the past perfect as you can see here. Oh. So here it's a very simple one because I already have a verb in the past possible. Like they have fired many people due to the crisis. They have fired whom? Many people. Many people, I have to keep it in the present perfect. So have. Then I need to introduce the verb to be but it's in the present perfect. So I need to introduce the verb to be in the past possible. Many people have been in the other verb. It's already in the past possible. So I just copied. Many people have been fired due to the crisis. 
And if it's in the past perfect, it's the same. They had fired Mary before the crisis started. Mary had been fired before the crisis started. Okay, any questions so far? Please, one minute for you. Any question or no? Can I just go on? No, thank you. Come on, be fast so we can finish this. Go on, go on. No, thank you. All right. Go, go. Very good. Oh, awesome. Let's go. What if I have modal verbs? All of them. Will, would, can, could, may, might, should, must. Piece of cake. Oh, observe how interesting. They will build a new bridge over that river. So they will build what? A new bridge. So that's going to be the subject. A new bridge. Will be built. I have to use the modal after modals. I only use verb in the base form. So I always use be in the base form. And the past participle, built, will be built over that river. For all professional people that are listening to me at this moment, I have a wonderful suggestion. At your work setting, every time your superior, every time your supervisor, your boss asks you to prepare a report, to prepare a draft, to prepare a presentation, don't answer like, sure, boss, I can do it. When you say, I can do it, you are assuming full responsibility for that. What if, in order to make a good report, in order to make a good presentation, you depend on other people that also work in your department, and one or two of them just fail. They don't help you out. What are you going to do when your boss says, where is the report? Where is the presentation? You're going to say, I'm sorry, boss, but I was counting on John to do this, but he got sick. He didn't come to work. But you told your boss, I can do it. By using active voice, you cannot blame anybody else for your flaws. So I always tell my business students, never use active voice in a situation like this. Just say it. Sure, boss, it can be done. Or it will be done. It may be done. By saying it can be done, you are replying to your boss, but you are also saying that it doesn't depend exclusively on you. So if something goes wrong, you are not the only one to be blamed. Can you understand the importance of what I have just said to you? Tell me here, just give me your opinion there. Can you understand how important it is to change from I can do it to it can be done? Yes, 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 very good. Start yeah, thinking yeah. like this. Start thinking like this. I myself never say, I'll do it. It will be done. It will be done for sure, for sure. And then your boss is happy and your ass is safe. Okay, good. Let's go to the next part, almost the end of it. Okay. Sometimes, Certain verbs ask for two objects, two, not only one, like give, send, make. And then what happens? If I have two objects, it's possible to have two passive constructions. For example, somebody, I'm right here. Oh. Somebody sent flowers to my wife last week. And I was not here, okay? So somebody sent flowers to my wife. As I told you, somebody sent. Sent what? Flowers. 
Okay, I'm sorry. Yes, no good. Uh, can you clear that? Can you understand or no? I the think last... I think he said I think he said no 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 it's good. Carry ah, okay. on. Okay. Rodrigo, let okay. us know if you have any doubts, okay? All right. Well, somebody sent flowers to my wife last week. Sent what? Flowers to whom? My wife. I have two objects, flowers and my wife. If I have two objects, I would say flowers were sent to my wife last week. That's the first one. But I can also say my wife was sent flowers last week. Now, I'm going to ask the same question I ask all my students. Which of the two forms do you prefer? Flowers were sent or my wife was sent? Please let me know now. We don't have much time. Flowers were sent or my wife was sent? Flowers. Come on, more. Flowers or my wife? Which one sounds better? Flowers. Okay, one person said my wife. Flowers, 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 flowers. I would say that 99.99% .99 of Brazilians would probably prefer to say flowers were sent to my wife last week. But I'm sorry to disappoint you. That's not the favorite construction. Every native speaker prefers to start with the person. So the best and the most recommended option would be my wife was sent flowers. You can say, but I cannot translate that. No, that's English. That's not Portuguese. Sometimes you can't literally translate an expression. It's the same case of I was told. If you think about it in Portuguese, that doesn't exist. I was told that there is a nice restaurant. I was told. See? Translate this. Sounds weird. Crazy. Doesn't make sense. This is beautiful English. Beautiful English. You can stop anyone in the street. Excuse me, sir. I was told there is a pharmacy near here. I was told there is a hospital not far from here. They understand exactly what you are trying to say. Okay, any question about this or no? Can I just go on? Any question? Go on, thank you, thank you. Okay, so here we have some examples, exercises. Well, can anyone please give me the answer to number two? The best possible answer in English for number two. Someone sent a postcard to me. What's the best possible answer for this? There are two possible, but what's the best? A postcard was sent to me. That's a good one. It's correct, but that's not the best possible one. What's the best possible answer? A postcard was, ah, okay, thank you. Somebody here said, I was sent a postcard. Another person said, I was sent a postcard. This is the best possible answer. Even if you say it's strange. A postcard was sent to me, it's acceptable, it's good English. But the best possible answer is, I was sent a postcard last week, okay? I was sent a postcard. Thank you for sharing. How about this one here? The police found the body near the swamp. Can you give me the answer to this, please? The police found the body near the swamp. What would be the answer for this one, please? Okay, I have we two are, messages. We are, yes, I have exactly. Two, yes, yes, and I would like to Three, talk about third one. Good. Okay. Uh, please observe that when we use the passive voice, 
what is important is the action. So as somebody said here, uh, a body or the body was found by the police for the police. Is it possible to see all the answers above, Bruno, or no? They just keep going. Yes, up yes. Bear, bear with me a minute, please. So the first answer that we got was the body was found by the police. Okay. By thank police. You. By police. There is no. Yes. Uh, there is no the death. Okay. And then the set. Okay. Okay, whoever said that the body was found by police, forget the police. We want to emphasize the fact that the body was found near the swamp. Really, it's not important if it was the police, if it was a jogger running by, or a homeless person. Probably in the newspaper, you're going to see the body, a body or the body was found near the swamp. But there was another person that wrote here, oh, the body was found near the swamp for the police. Well, if you ever need or feel that it's necessary to express the agent responsible for the action, it's only possible to use the preposition by the police, never for. And you would use it after the verb, like the body was found by the police near the swamp. But as I said, we use passive voice to avoid mentioning the person responsible for the action. Okay? The body was found. Good, good. Okay. Uh, one more here. I have a question. Every time I have two active voices, it's better to start with the one I have a subject. Well, you will have a subject in all of them. It's better to start with the person, like I was sent flowers, not flowers were sent to me. I. It's better to start with the person. Okay, I have a question here. What is swamp? Swamp is an area that is covered by water, okay? Uh, it's like in Florida, you have uh, the Everglades. The Everglades is a very large swampy area, okay? So that's the idea of swamp, okay? I think I, you got my idea, Annalisa. Yes, good. Glad I helped. Now, how about uh, this one here? Someone is calling me every night. What is the answer? I'm glad you understood, Annalisa. Maria da Gloria, you didn't understand what is no. No stands for you don't know what swamp. Yes? Maria da Gloria, Bruno, can you ask her if she's not sure about yeah, swamp? Yeah, no, no worries. I will send her a private message here. No worries, Roberto, okay. leave it with me. Okay, uh, Elizabeth, calling me every night. That's not the answer. I was called every night. No, I have been called every night. Every night someone was calling me. I was called every night. So far, I have not got one right answer. Come on, guys. We have one more minute. All the answers are not right. All of them are not right. Someone is calling me every night. Come on. We have one more minute. If you don't give me the right answer, I'll do it for you. But I don't want to do it. Someone is calling me every night. No, 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 nope, nope. Someone is calling me. It's active voice. I want the passive voice. Okay, no one. So is I am, just a moment. I, I am being, it's in the present continuous. 
I told you that you have to preserve the original tense. I am being, now I need the past participle, called every night. Believe it or not, that's the answer. Why I stop here? It's not necessary to say by someone because I don't know who is calling. So I'm being called every night. I'm being called every night. Okay? Yes, I already changed it. I'm being called every night. Understand? Present continuous. We need to keep it in the present continuous. So is calling. So I am verb to be. I need to introduce the verb to be again, but in the ing. I am being, and this verb goes to the past participle, called. I'm being called every night. Any question about this? There are more exercises to be done. Uh, I also answered all the exercise from yesterday. You have the answers here, okay? And tomorrow we will continue. I'd like to thank you very much for spending some time with us. On behalf of Descubro Mundo, we are doing our best, okay, to keep you happy or to keep you entertained since we are all supposed to stay home. I hope you enjoyed the class. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? And please, as Bruno is asking you, always fill out the, it's a survey, okay? What, what is that good for? Just send us some message like, tomorrow I'd like to talk about this. Tomorrow I'd like to discuss this. I'd love to interact with all of you, but there are so many people here that if I unmute all your microphones, nobody's going to understand anyone, okay? Yeah. And, so, and, and the feedback is great. I'm sorry to interrupt, Roberto. The, the feedback will be it's great obvious. for us. The feedback will be a great opportunity for us to, to prepare ourselves in a better way so we can deliver a even better course. Okay, so it, it's extremely helpful if you, if you guys reply to our survey. It won't take more than 30 seconds, I promise. Super, super fast. And the whole idea about this survey is to get all your feedback so we can keep evolving, okay? Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Today Thank was you a, very a, a, much. A big thing for us. We got nearly 40 people attending our lesson. Thank you very much. I'll see you guys tomorrow at the same time. Okay. Thank you, everyone, again. It was my pleasure to be here with you. Stay home and stay safe. Remember that. Okay. See you tomorrow. Bye bye now. Thank you. Bye.